nice welcome this is a general reading for the collective of leo sun moon rising venus it's not date or time specific so whenever you come upon it if it speaks to you could be your message at that time welcome cross watchers for leo and for those of you who are brand new to the channel happy to have you here um, do want to mention that we uh, have a new moon coming up in the sign of Taurus. It's going to be a super new moon, so a little extra added oomph there. Um, that is occurring around 11.20, 1.22 p.m. Eastern Time on the 7th. So that will be sort of the 8th um, across the pond and other points uh, around the globe. Check your local listings. I will be uploading a reading for that on the 7th. Um, since it's not happening till later that night. Okay, so stay tuned for that. I'm pulling from Whispers of Love uh, to activate the reading. We are in Taurus season, which is ruled by Venus. So we're looking at matters of the heart here. Oh, Leo, card 26, new love. Embrace an opportunity for love in your work prospects or for spiritual growth. New love. So could be, um, yeah, opportunity for love in your, in your work prospects or for spiritual growth. So could be something that comes on your path where you recognize a new love, passion, opportunity um, for how to uh, serve the collective that's possible for spiritual growth. Like the minute I read that, I think about what I do here. Okay, my old love of tarot became a new love of using it to serve others on this platform in the way that I do. So that's sort of how I'm, I'm figuring it. Plus, um, the, the numerology on the card, though you can't see it, it's super small, is 26. Two and six is eight. Eight is associated with the strength card in tarot, uh, which is Leo energy, but it's also about the workhorse, right? It's the eight, think of eight of pentacles. It's, um, right, it's sort of fine tuning things um, as we a approach a completion of a cycle or an experience. So uh, sometimes we need inspiration. You know, new, we need to discover new love about what it is we're working on. That is my interpretation for you. All right, here we go. <laughs> now that I said all that, could be new love coming your way. Oh, my God. Guys, or a returning love for sure. Oh, Leo, look at this. So lovely, so beautiful. It is, <laughs> it, it is like a new expression of love that I'm seeing here. So when I do this split soulmate spread, I set the, I'm laughing at myself. I, split, I set the intention that this side is for the sign I'm reading for or about, which in this case is Leo, which would make this side for the divine counterpart to Leo. It can come through reversed. As always, it's a general reading, not a private reading. So you kind of have to take it as it resonates for you. Um, but what I'm seeing here is like an offer of love from the heart, something very sensitive, romantic, vulnerable. Uh, your person on this side, if it falls out this way, comes in with judgment energy. This is Pluto. Pluto has just stationed retrograde again in Aquarius. We'll slowly start moving backward, pop over into Capricorn, and I believe in October we'll turn around again and head back toward Aquarius, which I don't think he hits until, I want to say January 2025, somewhere around there, um, and we'll be in Aquarius to stay. So there is still some um, energy. Remember, Pluto is the lord of the underworld. It's the shadow. It's the, it's the below. Um, and in this card, you see the archangel calling the sinners up from their graves to give them, offer them a second chance at life, at love, at happiness, at fill in the blank. And it feels to me that that's what I'm seeing here. This person is stepping into the reading with an energy of second chances of seeking forgiveness and or redemption. Um, the blocker challenge that they're facing two of wands is which path gets me there, um, right? Which really kind of requires them to 
uh, come to terms with what it is they truly want in a world of possibilities. If they could have anything they want to come of this connection or where it is they're seeking second chances, what it is they're seeking second chances about, they've got to choose a path. And there's a little bit of a challenge around that. But the opportunity for them is to push through, move beyond it, and get to the peace of mind, um, smooth sailing, calmer waters. Nice message. Now for you, you're stepping into the reading with some energies of reconciliation. The judgment card can also be reunion, reconciliation. So it feels to me like you're sort of on the same page, though your outlook is um, decidedly more optimistic. Right, I feel like this person is coming to the thoughts of reconciliation from um, some serious, deep um, exploration of shadow. You're not, you're kind of coming in a little bit more idealistic, optimistic. Um, it's more about where you find the joy in this connection. Like what brought you together in the first place? What did you have in common? Where did you have fun? How did you express that sense of joy and unity? That's how you're coming in. And there is a blocker challenge for you around the construct of life partnership or what's the long-term nature of this connection. So it's kind of coming in as a question mark. And the opportunity for you is just focus on the happiness right? Find your bliss. <laughs> That's what this card is signaling. So Leo, really interesting energies happening here. Let's jump in with the Knight of Cups. We have Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Eight of Swords. Um, I feel there's an, a long overdue conversation that needs to take place. And I do feel that this person, whoever this is, it could be you coming to them, them coming to you. It is about uh, making sure you're kind of on the same page. There is an, eff a, a, an effort at some form of, of cooperation and it feels like it's more emotional. Um, this isn't just somebody coming in to be all romantic and bring a dozen roses. It's not that simple. The romance is coming from deep feeling um, and there is a little vulnerability attached to it, which is why this person is struggling with the path of how they get to this spot. Um, will you even be open right, to what it is they have to share? Will you create that solid foundation upon which the two of you can maybe build some new aspect of your relationship, right? New love. Queen of Swords has lots of questions, possibly unanswered questions. This person may be a little intimidated by that uh, and therefore may have some stuck energy around it. I am feeling most of the energy here coming from this side of the spread because it seems like there's a bigger struggle for this person and that they may sort of overthink things and be concerned about how you will receive what it is they have to share with you on an emotional level. Remember Queen of Swords is very diplomatic. She kind of checks her emotional crap at the door. She's level headed. She's not, you know, she's not, um, she doesn't have an agenda, not a hidden agenda. Unless of course she comes through reversed and then look out, right? So I am feeling like this person isn't sure wherein you will fall out on that particular um, line of response, right? Like where might you come out? Would you come out more aggressively, more uh, uh, cutting, um, possibly rejecting, um, or would you come out more open, to something, a more diplomatic response, more cooperative and co-creative response. So that's what the issue is and that's why there's some stuck energy around that. Not a lot, it's underneath. I don't think it's gonna hold this person back, but it's certainly letting me know that they're not sure what their next best step is, which goes right in line with the Two of Wands. So let's see, judgment in their present energy. Seven of Cups, right? Ten of Pentacles for you both, Ace of Swords. So some insight is trying to find its way in, some kind of an, oh, I see it so clearly. It's, they're not there yet. 
This person is still sort of mired in a sense of emotional overwhelm, confusion, lots of options. And because it does impact the future of this connection, um, right? Like where is this headed? Does it have that kind of potential? Is there something we can um, restructure a solid foundation upon which to build something more long-term? So this person's in the weeds of their emotion, feeling lots of, um, you know, they're seeking some form of forgiveness for something here, but they're not getting the clarity yet. It's right there under the surface. Um, and so the minute they see that, I think that this challenge um, dissipates. But for now, two of wands, Page of Swords, Five of Swords, Lovers. Oh, wow. So I love that we have two cards of choice. The twos are always about choices and decisions. In this case, what do I want? And which path is going to get me there? Uh, right? Like, you know how when people say, if money were no object, dot, 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 what would you, right? This is like, well, if you don't have to worry about the outcome... <laughs> being cut by the queen of swords here what would you do how would you proceed and they're not really sure yet but underneath is the lover's card and the lover's card is choosing this connection of their free will it is a soul bond it is a soul connection for some of you you identify it as soulmate twin flame whatever you want to label you want to smack on it but it references a very special connection something that's hard to escape or ignore long term um, and I'm feeling like their curiosity uh, here is, will they be, re, you know, will they be defeated in this effort? Since Five of Swords can also come in as, um, right, like an unfair fight, I feel like this person is maybe curious as to how to best approach so they don't incur your wrath. Um, and I'm saying that for a reason. We've got the Queen of Swords, which can go either way. We have the Page of Swords, which is curious and looking for some assurances here. Um, Five of Swords can be, they're seeking some sort of forgiveness and or redemption or reconciliation over something. And they're not really sure what path to take. They have all these options. So I feel like um, this Five of Swords represents where things could go wrong, like the step on the rake moment, right? <laughs> where things could go terribly wrong. So I do feel they're sort of being I spy about that, or at least considering it. And the opportunity for them is to not really pay attention to that as much, but is to seek their peace of mind, to seek moving forward and finding the clarity and the calmer waters beyond all the turbulence that has come before. Yes. Wow. Judgment. Right? It's like, almost like, don't worry about the potential for conflict. It's going to exist no matter what. You, you know, don't worry about how it's going to be received because that's not what this is about. This is about you getting peace. I'm talking about this person. Spirit's telling them this is about you getting peace, finding your way to self-forgiveness and redemption. So I like the opportunity for them, despite some potential conflicts, which can come from outside sources, right? Things that sort of get in the way of their goal. It's almost as if the opportunity for them is to move past it, to sort of stay with their original intention and come from an, an energy of generosity, right? I'm going to be giving, I'm going to be generous um, with my time, energy, effort, resources, spirit, and love. And if I, you know, <laughs> poke the bear or knock down the hornet's nest, so be it. So I do feel the opportunity is for this person to kind of get out of their own way and um, to, to pull back from... Uh, where they're stuck, which is creating scenarios. Well, if A then B, right? What are all the permutations of what could happen so that I avoid the things I'm afraid of? Mm -mm, can't do it. Got to come from an open, vulnerable heart. So we get a very strong handle on this person's energy. And here you are with the three of cups. Like I'm all open to it.
this is something that yeah I do feel you're you're manifesting this kind of reconciliation or a cause for celebration in the coming back together uh, maybe I'll be a little guarded um, four of Pentacles is also a way of saying yeah I know where my boundaries are I know where my boundaries are and I know we have some things to work through so that's the focus for you is I got, I've got no hidden agenda, Queen of Swords. I am coming with an open mind and an open heart. And, you know, it's in the reconciliation where we find that sense of joy and unity and we get a reminder of, oh, this is why I really dig this person. But that doesn't mean we drop our guard or that we don't establish firm boundaries as we work through the nitty gritty. Um, so I do feel that this is part of your new moon in Taurus manifestation process here. What it is you're calling in. Yes. Now, the challenge is this Ten of Pentacles. Well, there's some Leo energy right there in the King of Wands. I almost feel like the challenge is if this apology comes in and it just feels like it's um, a little more ceremonial, like, well, yeah, remember what happened? Yeah, my bad. I feel bad about that. It, it, you need something more. So I'm feeling like you're not going to be satisfied with just a simple, oh, by the way, you know, here I am and I'm ready for all this love and romance. And by the way, I'm sorry for what happened before. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. I think that's the challenge because you want something more to kind of hang your hat on with regard to what's the what's on the agenda where are things headed what do you see in our connection for the future and i'm not talking about commitments and marriage and all that stuff it's like why is there why is there this effort now to repair the damage right to fix what's broke what am i investing in um, because with the three of Pentacles, we have some form of investment where we're kind of co-creating something. So I do feel, should this person stake their claim for this connection, they want who you are and what you're about, you're more focused on the future. So I don't think um, a quick, fast, you know, my bad is going to work. I think that's a challenge for you to have to overcome or to make that part of the boundary right almost like i feel you saying energetically like yeah okay if we're if we're just going to be friends we're friends and that's fine and you made your apology and forgiven you know have a nice life if you want something more of this connection i need a little bit more i need something more yeah i need to really know where you stand so let's see the Ten of Cups from um, Spirit for your opportunity. So the opportunity here is to talk about the elephant in the room because that's what you're really reconciling is that tower energy. What wasn't sustainable? What didn't work? What didn't stand up? What um, fell apart? Where were the cracks in the foundation? So it isn't just about the apology. It's about a conversation that is deep, um, that has you seeking some form of mutual understanding, validation, making peace over it, so that you have an opportunity to be happy in this situation. So you feel like, oh, now I came full circle and I feel all that sense of emotional completion and happiness that has been missing for so long with regard to this connection. So I do feel the opportunity though is that the happiness comes from resolving something that was either ignored, avoided, 
or swept under the rug. It's going to be different for each one of you. Um, and a simple little, yeah, my bad, isn't going to cut it. I don't think that's what you would get, um, but I do think I'm seeing someone here who is a little, um, like, shy about putting it all out there on the line only to be smacked down. They're being told uh, under no certain terms should you hold back. This is about you being invested from the level of heart and soul, uh, regardless of the questions you are asked and how you are approached. So don't let that hold you back. They're being guided uh, to sort of focus on the fact that the forgiveness is for them, right? Like, I apologize not for your sake, but for my own sake. That is the truth of it, right? When we apologize to somebody, it's our way of saying, I humaned today, uh, or I really messed that up, and I deeply apologize. Because that allows us to move forward and to make changes and corrections and improve as a human being. And then the forgiveness is also for us. So if someone says, I apologize, and you say, forgiven, I forgive you, you're not forgiving them for them, you're forgiving them for you. So you have the peace and you can move on. We have it as humans, we've intellectualized it all wrong. Um, you know, apology and forgiveness. So I feel like this person is being guided to not focus on what the reaction would be, to do what needs to be done, to say what needs to be said, and to make sure it's coming from the deepest wells of emotional vulnerability that they have to bear. And you're over here with a challenge around, well, what does that mean for the future? And I'm not just going to, you know, accept a quick little wave off of something that was very devastating for me. We're going to need to have a longer talk. And that opportunity comes in with a lot of happiness, with the, ah, oh, that's, that's how that feels. See? So, Leo, interesting reading. I'm going to, of course, take it to the extended. So before I give you the astrology that showed up here, if you've enjoyed it, re, you know, subscribe below, like, share as you feel called to do, and um, yeah, and then we'll check out the extended. What I do in this particular spread is now I want to see what's working for you or against you in the relationship as a couple. What are the opportunities for you to move through those parts of your relationship where there is more challenge, where it's not working for you? In other words, what? What does this person want you to know? What's their message? What are they picking up from you? A message from spirit for some guidance direction or something you need to pay attention to, the hidden energies. What can you not see that you might want to know about and how might things unfold going forward? So that's what we're going to do in the extended. There are links below. Please be reminded. There are two, um, there's a one-time extended for this which is my regular as always one and done but there's also a monthly program now and so click that link read all about it you get access to four different collections it is more like a netflix where you got to go into the account and access um, what it is you want to watch so i'm heading there now the links are below have a good one bye for now oops almost forgot the astrology so here we go we've got Knight of Cups is Pisces energy. Queen of Swords is Libra. We have um, Judgment here twice is Pluto, which rules Scorpio. Um, Gem uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius in our Page of Swords. Gemini in the Lover's card. We have the Magician is uh, Mercury, which rules Virgo and Gemini. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio in our Page of Cups. Leo in the King of Wands, we have Mars here um, in the Tower, which rules Aries. Okay, so thanks, and I'll see you in the extended. Bye.